as I conclude the series that I've been speaking on about holy moments, we've been looking at Luke's gospel and the Christmas story there and some moments. But I want to start with a quote from a famous theologian, Dr. Seuss. And Dr. Seuss said, sometimes you don't know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. As we conclude, we've already read in Luke 2, 10 to 12, where the angels came to the shepherds and said, do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. And the shepherds immediately, without hesitation, they left to go and see the baby. They told everyone. They were amazed. But when you read that passage in Luke 2, there's a verse that's so easy to overlook. Luke 2 and verse 19 says, But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Sometimes you don't know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. Today's message is titled, The Power of a Memory. Mary treasured all those things. It says she pondered them. Now, we can't be sure what she was pondering. But given the circumstances, I want to suggest she pondered three things. The first, she pondered God's promises from the past. I think a lot of us do this when it, times are tough. Let's face it, she'd just given birth to a baby in a barn with the farm animals there, with no anesthesia, no gas and air, no TENS machines and all those things. They say, I, I, I mean, I wouldn't know, but there are a few things more memorable than giving birth. 50% of the audience tonight will know what I mean. And the rest of us just look on and go, oh, no. She's a new mum. It's chaos. The shepherds have been. Not, you know, she wasn't just here in a stable. The shepherds have visited. The people that no one wanted to have anything to do with. She pondered. Where are we? We're in Bethlehem. It was Micah 700 years before. It was read to us by Essie. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel. Maybe she pondered that. Maybe she remembered the time she'd been frustrated. You know, I think she probably got frustrated with Joseph. She told him what had happened and he hadn't believed her. And I guess as time went on, he was out at work and he'd get home late. And then he comes with the most bad news at all. Caesar says, we've got to go to Bethlehem for a census. And I guess Mary said something to the effect of, there's no way in heck I'm going there an 80 mile journey on foot when I'm nine months pregnant. Because let's face it, that's what you'd say, isn't it? You don't want to go traveling on foot through the hills in the winter when it's dangerous. There are thieves, there are bandits, there were wild animals. There were lions and bears in the Holy Land at that time. And she's nine months pregnant. And she's got to go with Joseph to Bethlehem. But she probably thought, but God took us there. God was with us. God had promised that this baby will be born in Bethlehem. And then she remembered that other promise from Isaiah 7, 14 that Rachel read for us. The Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. 
as she was holding that baby, she was holding God. As that song, Mary Do You Know, says, when she kissed the face of her baby, she kissed the face of God. Imagine that. Imagine that. God with us. God in a, in a form we can understand. Of course, he's always been with them. He's always been there. He's always just been there if only we'd reach out. So the first thing she did was ponder God's promises from the past. The second thing is she, she pondered, I think, God's peace for the present. You know, she might have been frustrated that Joseph hadn't believed her. But then he'd stood by her. He'd done the right thing. He'd believed. You know, he was a, a builder, a carpenter. He wouldn't have been rich. Even though he was from the line of David, he was, he was royalty. But they weren't wealthy. How would they survive? How would they move? But these kings had come with gold, frankincense and myrrh. And we all think, ooh, gold, that would be handy. But the myrrh was much more precious than the gold. They got all these gifts. And she was pondering that in the middle of all this chaos, in the middle of all this uncertainty, God was providing. God was providing for her and her family. It was beyond understanding. It wasn't what she would have chosen. It was beyond her understanding. But she stopped and paused and pondered. And I guess being unmarried and pregnant 2,000 years ago wasn't something you would dream would happen to you. It would be a nightmare. It would be a disgrace. But she pondered these things and she reflected how God had used some of the biggest disappointments in her life for his purpose. And I want us to think about that, how God uses our biggest disappointments sometimes to bring joy. I remember a long time ago, when I was at college, I got fed up with my A-levels. And I dropped out. I dropped out to get a full-time job stacking shelves at Asda. But I wasn't content with that, so I went on management training. And they took me all the way to Acox Green outside Birmingham to a B&B &B whilst I did my training. And I stayed in this B&B &B with four other guys. And we didn't have our own rooms. There was none of that back then. You shared and we were all like bunked up like a, a, a dormitory. There was nothing to do at night. This B&B &B was like, it was horrendous, you know. It was this old couple and you, you ate dinner in the dining room. And if you wanted to watch telly, you had to sit in their lounge with them. And for anyone who knows me, that, that's kind of like, ah, no, I don't want to socialize like that. No, ah, run a mile. And the food wasn't great either. Every time we went down, we used to go down every couple of months. She used to do this meatloaf. Yeah, it still brings that in my, like gag, because it was horrible, and we used to kind of wrap it in, in our serviettes and leave the table and make it look like we'd eaten it all, because none of us liked it. But because there was no place to socialise, we went to the cinema. And it was a, in a cinema on the main road in Acox Green that I had an encounter with God that changed my life. 
and I went to church. And the church that I went to was the one my dad and my stepmom went to. And literally, it was that big. That side. That's it. That's as big as it got. And it was full of old people, and I was sat at the back. You know, my dad was the youth. <laughs> and I was sat at the back, but Helen walked in. We went out, and the rest is history. But I was still working for Asda, and I didn't like it. They put me on nights, and I lost about two stone. And then I was made redundant. And it was an opportunity to do something different, to avoid working on Sundays. So I joined a training organization. And in 2004, 2005, that was a really difficult time here in the church. It was difficult for everyone who was with us at that time, but we faced personal attacks. And then ended up, I ended up leading this mission to Uganda. There were some good things there, but there were some really frightening things happen. You know, when there's seven, seven, seven of you crammed into a car and you drive into the bush, not know where, and you get out and the driver drives off and you're just stuck in the bush for the night. It wasn't easy, but it got me thinking about ministry, about how I could serve God. And I was pondering how I would serve God, and I got made redundant again. But it was great, actually, because that enabled me to go to college and to study and to do the things that have got me here. And then about 11 years ago, 11, 12 years ago, we faced significant loss. Helen's mum and dad died, followed by my nan, my dad, and my stepdad. And I took three of those funerals. It was hard. It took its toll. I think I lasted one day, didn't I, of Holiday Bible Club, and that was it. I was completely wasted, and I was off, and I couldn't do anything. But what I could rely on was the peace that only Jesus could bring. I could think that God was bringing peace in the present because I look back at all those things and it was usually at the point of biggest disappointment being made redundant twice or whatever that God moved. God moved when I was really fed up in that B&B &B to get me to that cinema to speak to me. So it's always in the times of disappointment that God is able to speak. If you look at your life, your life story, and ponder, I want to tell you, God has always been there. He is always faithful. It's only when we look back that we can see. Just as Mary sat there pondering, but it didn't end there. She'd reflected on God's promises from the past, God's peace in the present, and she looked for God's power for the future. If we read on a little bit from the traditional Christmas story, we know that Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple when he was eight days old to be dedicated, and they met there a prophet called Simeon. And Simeon took Jesus in his arms to praise God. And he said these words in Luke 2, 34 and 35. This child has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. And then he turned to Mary and said, and a sword will pierce your very soul. Now that's a promise no mom wants to hear. No parent, no one ever wants to hear a promise like that. There's no way Mary could ever know, have known in the moment that the world's greatest blessing would come from her greatest breaking. 
she was there. She was there to watch Jesus grow. She'd walked with God. She'd been faithful. She knew that God had always been faithful in the past. That he was faithful in the present. But she had to trust him with the future. She had to trust him when they were exiled to Egypt. She had to trust him as Jesus grew. She had to trust him as Jesus began to preach the good news that he'd come to share. She had to trust God whilst everyone turned their backs on Jesus. We read lots about the crowds, but we also read that the, cr the crowds left him. They didn't stay. And then she had to watch as her son was arrested and crucified and died on a cross. She had to trust God's power for the future because three days later, God raised Jesus from the dead. If things are bad for you, can I suggest just slow down and ponder a faithful God who's got the power. He holds the future in his hands. You never know what's three days away. For Mary, her greatest breaking was the world's greatest blessing. God was in that moment. If you're hurting, God's the comforter. If you're afraid, God's our help in time of trouble. If you're weak and overwhelmed, God is our ever-present strength. If you've been rejected, he's your friend who will never leave you. If you're financially strapped, God's your provider. If you're sick, he's your healer. If you're a sinner, and we all are, he's our savior. God loves you. He's working for your good. He's here in this room now. Ponder it. Embrace it. And savor it. This moment. This moment. And each time we hear these songs, we read these readings, it's creating memories. Memories that remind us of the faithfulness and goodness of God. That he is Emmanuel. He is God with us. Sometimes you don't know the value of a moment until it becomes that memory. I pray that God will bless us this Christmas as our moments become memories when we can remember him.